The book of Revelation, it's truly a interesting, complicated, and controversial book. But it is a book about being revealed. Something is revealed in said text. For the community that first heard this text, the, the ways in which this book speaks about what's happening that to us it seems quite mysterious, uh, kind of code word-ish, would have been totally known by those who first heard it. Uh, the, the different, the metaphors utilized, the imagery utilized, would have, been, would have been something that would have spoken to the communities that were first hearing it. It's just that because we've lost that, uh, now we, we have a book that we have trouble kind of cracking the code for. But at the cornerstone of it is that in the midst of difficult times, not just within the community, but within the known world of said community, th this community was, was kind of facing persecution and struggle because of, of their belief in Jesus. In the midst of that kind of difficult circumstance where, where the things in the known world were not going as expected, what are we to do? Who are we to be as a community? And so the whole book imagines a new day. It tells the people, hey, we recognize the difficulties that you're going through in this particular moment. We recognize that all the signs and symbols around in the known world are telling us that something's really kind of really wrong. And yet in light of your faith in Jesus Christ, and in light of your commitment to this hope, and in light of your encounter with one another in love, this, this current circumstance is not the end of things. And so we are given a particular vision at the end of this book that lands us there. And when we hear it, it should speak to us deeply in these days. Because I recognize that for many of us, we are kind of a bit anxious in this very moment about what is happening in our world. Wars and rumors of war, there is pestilence, there, there, there is struggle, there is suffering, there is violence. Uh, all, all, of, all of that can do something within us. It, it, it shakes us in a particular way. So in some real ways, we, we need a revelation. We, we, we need to, to, to be helped into shining a light. In spite of our faith, who are we to be? What are we to do? Aren't the signs around us giving us some sense that things are not going in the right way? Why are we even doing this, right? As we gather for worship and as we, we sing songs of praise and as we rehearse the the story of our faith, and as we go into the world to serve, is what we are up to even making a difference in light of all that's going on in the world. So it can be quite frustrating for us, as it should be, but, but this is exactly, we, many of us are, are living in the place that this first century community was living, asking similar questions. And so as we move through this book, we, we are facing a revelation. We, the, 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 the layers are being peeled back and, and we're being given a, a sense of what does it mean to be us in the world as people who proclaim this good news, uh, this message, this gospel, uh, this Jesus Christ. And so today in the text, we see that divine life itself is revealed to us. And the goodness and the grace and the mercy of said divine life comes down. And a new heaven and a new earth emerge. It is, it is, it is a, a redeemed new heaven and a new earth. It, it, it is, it is our, our, the planet and the relationships and, and what we know in, in, in light of all that's happened in human history, right? All of a sudden, all that's happened in human history, then it's, it's turned around, it's transformed into the vision or, that originally was there at the beginning, a vision of a God who creates goodness, grace, mercy, compassion, 
justice, love. We, we see a vision of a new heaven and a new earth that emerge where all of a sudden the writer tells us there's something happening here. There is no pain. There are no tears. There is no suffering. In other words, all that, that the writer could say in the midst of, of this vision is, is that which he knew was no longer there. The, the current circumstance no longer guiding this effort uh, any longer, it no, no longer having the last word, and instead you have this, this redeemed, transformed, love-filled reality that unfolds before us. It is a beautiful vision <laughs> that, that, that kind of strikes us deep in the heart when we hear it. Um, and, and, and in verse 5, we, we didn't get to, to hear verse 5, but verse 5 says, says something that, that God is making all things new. Not making new things. God's not making new things. God is making all things new. So, so, so God's work, it's, it's redeeming still. It's a process through which all things are being redeemed right here in this earth of ours in these bodies of ours, in this creation that God made from the beginning. And so then what are we to do in, li in light, in light of, of, of our own uh, hopelessness and despair and anxieties about people and about creation and about all that is happening around us? What are we to do? Why are we still doing this? Why are we still gathering in this joyful way? Why, why, why are we still singing songs of praise? Why, why are we still uh, hopeful in, in, our, in our way of looking at the world? The reason is because we are a people who believe that by the power of Jesus, the transforming power of Jesus, the encounter with Jesus, Jesus who is love made flesh, Jesus who is divine life itself before us, that, that, that the work, this work that will be completed at some point at the end of time, what's been revealed to us is that this work, we can rehearse this work together each and every day. In other words, we gather for, with the hopeful anticipation that, that, that in our gathering, in our sharing of the story, in our proclaiming, in our praising, in our praying, in our serving, in our life together, that we then rehearse this reality just for that moment. Some of the ancient traditions like Eastern Orthodoxy uh, say, say that, that, in, that in worship, that, that, that the community called the church is, is literally raised into into the presence of God's self, right? It's called the divine liturgy. That in the, in the worship of the community, the community is literally elevated into the throne of God's self. Uh, other traditions uh, believe uh, that, that, that as we worship together, the Spirit of God comes down upon us like God came down upon Mount Sinai long ago. See, see so there's a collapsing of divine life into this life, a, a, a breaking into history, a crashing through. This is why this matters so deeply. This worship of ours, this gathering around, around text and around, and around praise and around prayer. This gathering, even, even this gathering digitally, right? That, that, that for this moment that we have to gather, we believe that, that divine life is coming into the world once again. And for maybe, maybe for this one moment, right here, right now, you're sensing the presence of divine life healing you, transforming you, redeeming you. Maybe, maybe for this one moment, all the worries and concerns that are plaguing you, the anxieties and the fears, maybe, maybe for this one moment, you have a a moment of, of rest, Sabbath, completion, integration in this moment. We being called, we as the community of people, as the body of Jesus in the world, we being called to you know, hard-headedly rehearse the possibility 
of this, of this way of being in the world. A new heaven and a new earth. No tears, no shame, no, no, no violence, no, no antipathy, uh, uh, no, no sadness, no loss, no death. In this, in this very moment, week to week, as we gather for worship to gather, we as a community are proclaiming that, that all that stuff it's not the end, that, 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 that it doesn't get the last word, that, that the, the images we're seeing on television in this moment of suffering across the world, that's, that's not the way that God intends anything for the world, that that's not the last word, and that, and that we then, we're then going to gather and we're going to praise and we're going to remember and we're going to intercede for one another and we're going to proclaim that there is a better way. There is a, the way that God intends for the world. Love made manifest. So today, friends, let us commit to one another to this way. Let, it, it, let us to try to rehearse this in the smallest of ways in each movement this week. Go practice compassion, uh, uh, practice love, uh, plas- uh, uh, practice restoration, uh, pr- practice uh, uh, redemption. Uh, own it for yourself and then engage it in, in each and every moment in your workplace, in, in your home, in, in, in the marketplace. And, 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 then, and then let us recommit to one another to, to continue to gather week to week for worship together and rehearse it. And, and, and here's the beauty of it, that, that when we can't gather, others gather on our behalf, but we are since 1866. We've gathered here, as the people call First Plymouth, and we've rehearsed a new heaven and a new earth. Divine life comes visiting each and every moment, making all things new for you, for us, for all creation and for the world. And until the end of time, friends, we'll continue rehearsing it that being our call in word and in being in the world, we continue rehearsing it, hard-headedly so, the Spirit of God with us in this work. And we looking forward to the day at the end of time when the final consummation of that promise will come true. But until then, let's keep at it, friends. In this moment, yes, but in each and every little moment in our daily lives. Thanks be to God.